astronaut Forrest. You give us hope, and your great accomplishment will be etched in the history of mankind. You're not alone. People from all over the world are keeping their eyes on you. So please, don't lose your hope and faith. We'll be praying for you and your safe journey home. What is it that inspires mankind to take great risk? Why is it that throughout history, humans have been driven to explore distant, uncharted places, despite the possibility of no return? In the case of Europa, the icy, mysterious moon of Jupiter, that inspiration came in the form of photographs photographs that revealed life. These ghostly images gave the entire human race unrepentant knowledge that life, as we know it, is not an isolated event reserved merely for Earth, but rather a miracle that is pervasive throughout the cosmos. And for the first time since the 1970s, humankind once again sought to set foot on a distant world. Hey, kids. Um, I want to know, how do you get to the bathroom in space? I'll answer this one. Check this out. We have a small... Actually, there is a little bit of gravity on the ship, so... So going to the bathroom in space is a lot like going to the bathroom on Earth. Well, I think the kids would enjoy how number one works. Eh? Next question. In the days after NASA retired the space shuttle program, and since the abandonment of the International Space Station, the world has had to turn to private enterprise when it comes to getting man back into space. The most influential name in space exploration has been, without a doubt, Walter Moffat. Whales on Europa. Yes. Every time I see these latest pictures, that goes chills down my spine. Which brings me to my next question of pictures. We have dozens and dozens of pictures. Lots of pictures. NASA is preparing a submersible rover to dive under the ice. NASA and its rover. My name is Gavin Hayden. Why aren't you wearing any spacesuits? The spacesuits, or EVAs, are used for extravehicular activity, so that would be outside the ship. But I suppose they could be used in an emergency with about two hours worth of life support. Charlie, it takes NASA a year just to pass gas. They have quadruple redundancy in everything they do in their engineering chain, and you name it. I have respect for NASA, but by the time their rover gets there, our boys will be on their way home. To accomplish the 13-year mission to explore the distant world, astronauts Nathan Miller and Michael Forrest are placed into a deep sleep for six years as their spacecraft races from planet to planet before speeding off to Europa. There they will spend one year in a state-of-the-art portable facility studying the newly discovered species of alien giants before finally returning home. My name's Emily. Um, aren't you going to Venus? Because that's a long way. That is actually a very uh, astute question. Um, it has to do with the orbital ellipses of the planets and uh, a very concerted effort on the part of the scientists as well as ourselves to increase the speed of the ship using not only the Earth's gravitational pull, but Venus as well. Yes, what I think my colleague is trying to say, it's all about going fast. 
So what we're going to do is spin around Venus to pick up speed, then slingshot from Venus to Earth, and to get even more speed, then we're off to Jupiter, faster than ever. Sounds cool, huh? Isn't the redundancy exactly what is needed here for safety? There are those who criticize you, who say that you rush this mission. This is not meant to be a disclaimer, but everybody knows how I feel, you know, that, that I'm very protective of my men. Columbus went around the world, Magellan sailed around the whole planet. We got guys going to the moon, they rushed them to the moon. And that was for a reason. We need somebody there. We need somebody to put their foot in the dust of the moon. Like many brave explorers before them, the two-man crew of Life One entrust their lives to their tiny vessel and to each other for a chance to witness the extraordinary. It has been called the most dangerous whale-watching expedition in history. My name is Sadie Pratt. What does it look like outside the window? It, it looks like stars. We have heard that this mission has cost you personally $50 billion. It cost me a lot. But look, that, that's what we're here for. That's what we're working on. That's the whole deal. Think about this for a minute. These boys are traveling at the speed of a 45 bullet. They're sound asleep. They're gonna go around Venus, past Earth, and then start orbiting Jupiter. What a miracle. They'll see the whales of Europa. But they'll be seeing it with their eyes. It won't be photographs from NASA. You're a man is wealthy enough to do anything he wants to do. Why aren't you up there with those men right now? Charlie, I've done everything I wanted to do, just about. I'm a bit long enough, too. I woulda, coulda, shoulda. But it really isn't about me. It's about future generations. Uh, can I ask a question? How is it that you plan to spend your free time? Space pong. We actually won't have a lot of free time. Now, ping pong in space. We're going to be doing experiments 24-7, not to mention a lifetime of study having to cram that into just one year, so. Yeah. But in our free time, I will be in my spacesuit, sitting on my porch, reading from my pocket Shakespeare by the light of Jupiter on the horizon. <laughs> um, that, that sounds beautiful. Thank you. Well, I, I guess... It's time for us to go. We have a lot of work to do before we go to sleep. Thank you for your wonderful question. Bye-bye. Thank you, kids. We'll see you guys in six years.
thrusters, check. OMS thrusters, check. Hey, pal, how we doing? I am doing just fine. Life One to Mission Control. There is a leak in the main habitation chamber. I've sealed the capsule and am suiting up. I'll be out of communications for... until further notice. Nathan Miller is dead. Life One out. Control. Uh, we received your emergency beacon. We're analyzing all of the data pouring in right now. Uh, as soon as we have some answers for you, we'll get back to you. Uh, acknowledge receipt of this message. Mission Control out. One, this is Mission Control. We have multiple failures of the hull in both uh, the capsule and the habitation module. We recommend like one shooting up immediately. The habitation chamber. I sealed the capsule and I'm suiting up. We'll be okay. out of communication. Well, it's us. great. You're on it. Um, we'll uh, keep sending more information as it comes in. Mission Control out. Life one out. This is Life One. The main habitation chamber is secure. The hibernation and reentry capsule is. I'm sorry, I, I don't know who you are. Um, can you find me Ben Elliott or uh, Bob Jansen? Would be great. There's life one out. Space travel is inherently dangerous. There could always be a problem. Let's say on the first leg, 
heading towards Venus or on the second leg going from Venus back to Earth uh, aborting the mission would be relatively simple we'd just come home we'd actually be asleep at the time so we probably wouldn't know that there was a problem of course after we make that last push around Earth and head towards Jupiter well there's really no going back Life One, this is Mission Control. Uh, we have Robert uh, Jansen uh, to come in and talk to you face-to-face. Uh, -face. All right, great, thanks. Michael? It's Michael. No, it's Michael, and you're Adam and I'm Bob, so let's cut the jargon. Michael, uh, hi. hi. I, it looks like the spacecraft was more than likely hit by a micrometeorite. And information is coming in, and we're doing our best to process it as quickly as possible. Just know that I am here, and as soon as I know anything, I, I will transmit back to you. Bob out. This is Life One. Good to see you, Bob. Damage report. Life support is solid, and oxygen is holding. But now, the habitation module is stabilized, and we're at 1.0 of Earth gravity. So whatever hit us must have not been big enough to knock us off our spin. The central fuel tank and booster engine are in the numbers. Nuclear reactor remains unbreached, and all radiation shielding is functioning well. Europa habitation ballast array and all contents, including ice drill platform, inflatable habitat, and mini submersible are reading 100%. Looks like the only thing that we lost, actually, was the hibernation and re-entry capsule. I'll do another diagnostic check and I'll be in touch. Thanks, Bob. Life went on. Life One, this is Mission Control. We have an update on the situation. Uh, but Mr. Moffat would like to deliver this message himself. Thank you. Uh, Michael. Walter Moffat. Listen, first of all, we deeply regret the loss of Nathaniel. Not much you can say about a kind of thing like this, but Mr. Jeffs has taken over uh, for Mr. Elliot, who passed away about two years ago with a heart attack. A lot's changed since you've been gone. And on that note, we've decided to abort the mission. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Mission out. Hi Mike, my name is Erwin and this is my family, Mila and Druid. We just like to, to thank you for being our eyes in another world. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. This is Life One. I've received your message and am aborting the mission to Europa. Given our current position, we will continue our present course past Venus as scheduled and toward Earth as scheduled, at which point we will execute a leg three abort, scrapping the slingshot maneuver to Europa from Earth. I'll make the changes necessary for a braking procedure in preparation for re-entry and thereby an end to the mission. This is life one. Wow. Okay, this is all very exciting. Hey, ease up, man. Smile. Smell the kids. It's good PR. Hit the button.
This is life one. It's been 24 hours since the accident. My hibernation sickness is starting to wear off. The food recycling system is up and running. We're at 100%. Obviously, most of the comforts of home are locked away in the Europa Habitation Ballast Array. So I won't get my comfortable chair. I am going to miss my bed and the window, for that matter. We're only supposed to spend a week to two weeks in this chamber, but we're just going to have to make it work. We're just going to have to. This is life one. Out. Michael. Bob. Obviously. It was important for me right now to tell you that I need you to get on a routine. I need you to sleep. I need you to eat three meals a day. I need you to exercise. It, it will be very, very important for you and for me for you to do all of the work that you can to stay sane up there and to know that I am here to talk to you or at least send you periodic messages that at some point in the future you'll respond to. I'm here for you, buddy. All right? Bob out. Hi, Michael. Bob here. Just checking in. Uh, you've got a lot of people around here watching you. In fact, you're pretty much the biggest story in the world right now. Um, so I need to ask you, can I have the exclusive rights to your book? But also, I was, uh, I was asked today to ask you how you're feeling. Seems an odd question. But then I, I realized I hadn't asked you. So... How are you? How are you feeling? Bob out. This is life one. Uh, diagnostics seem to be going smoothly as of right now. It'll probably take me another three days to fully check the entire ship, at least this part of it anyway. I've taken in about 2,100 calories. I have 600 to go. I'm gonna try and keep it at that level for the duration. I've done about 16 minutes of exercise. I think that's too much. I'm gonna try and dial it back for tomorrow. <coughs> Otherwise, we're just trying to conserve our energy. I'll get in a daily log tomorrow about this same time. Other than that, we should be fine. This is life one, out. Okay, Michael, here's the situation. You have a lot on your plate right now, but every single bit of it is extremely important. You've got a post-Venus engine burn that needs to happen. Otherwise, you're going to spend the rest of your life as Venus's only real moon. 
unfortunately, from my end, I am looking at an electrical system that is completely fried and, and, and it, it needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. So you're going to have to perform that engine burn manually, which obviously it wasn't the way things were meant to be. The system's primary generator is unstable at best, and you have got to keep the power running. You lose power and you will freeze to death in a matter of hours. Be very careful. I, 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 Michael, what we have here is a classic old school Christmas light situation. Remember at Christmas when you were trying to get your Christmas tree lights to work? And they weren't inexplicably. And so you had to go through every single bulb and test it to get proper connection in order for the lights to light up. Well, that's what you're going to have to do alone with a $25 gajillion dollar spaceship. What I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to take all of the control systems from the capsule and reroute them to the habitation module, the, the monitor that you're looking at right now. Let's take all of the systems and let's reroute it there. Now, I hate to tell you this, but this means that, Michael, you're going to need to go back in the capsule and get your hands dirty. It's going to take you a lot of time, but uh, just like Christmas, it'll be worth it in the end. Bob out. This is Life One, received your message. I understand what you're saying, Bob, but I think I can get to everything I need to get to in the main habitation chamber. If I go into that capsule, I'm gonna have to get fully suited up. It's gonna be hard to work. It may take extra time coming from this way, but hell, I got plenty of time. Frankly, I don't want to go in that capsule if I don't have to. So let's see what we can do from this side. This is life one. Out. Life one, this is Mission Control. Um, it's me, Adam. Um, I know you lost all your uh, music and uh, entertainment data with the death of the capsule. Uh, so I there's some music that I'm going to send up to you now, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. No, no, no. Uh, no, no. This is life one. Turn it off and keep it off. Life went out. I started work on rerouting the control panel today. find two ping pong paddles, ping pong ball, and a book of light reading. Compliments of Nathan Miller. Life went out.
Astronaut Forest, Iman and Gui Mukisha. Ugaruke Vuba. On behalf of my family and with love from all of our country, we wish you a safe return and you've been a really big inspiration for all of us. Please come back safely, okay? Thank you, kids. We'll see you guys in six years. And thanks again for your great questions. You did good. Finished Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Again. Don't really care for her poetry. We'll move on to Shakespeare tomorrow. This is like one out. Jackson, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Ray Top. Okay, first name is George. George. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, it, it might be time now to start yeah. thinking about performing some no fire engine burn test just to check the connectivity on the primary generator. Let me know when you might be ready to start testing, and we'll get ready on our end down here. Bob out. I've rerouted the circuits from S23. I think we're about, let's say 10 days out before we'll be able to do some kind of engine burn test on the new control panel. This is life one out. This is life one daily log. Did another 10 minutes of exercise. That seemed to go pretty well. 2,400 calories consumed today. I guess we'll call it a late night snack to finish up. I've been eating candy corn flavored paste for the last 14 days. I think we'll switch to cheeseburger. Life went out. Oh. Sleepy, sneezy, happy, grumpy, dopey, doc. No, yeah. Sleepy, sneezy, happy, grumpy, dopey, angry, and doc. I've eaten what I'm supposed to eat today. I have exercised as much as I'm supposed to exercise. I've been working on rerouting this damn panel for I don't know how long. And I would love to have just a little room to work. Next time you build one of these things, maybe, maybe a little elbow room. Just a thought. Sleepy, sneezy, happy. The one drunk. It's daily log 42. Uh, calisthenics, uh, 10 minutes. Caloric intake, 2,700, right on the money. Happy to say that panel 17OHG is finished. So put a big check mark by that one. We'll get to work on 1801HG tomorrow, but today I do believe I am putting my feet up. Sleepy, sneezy, happy, grumpy. Sleepy, sneezy, happy, grumpy, dopey, bashful, and dumb.
We're about 24 hours from our first engine burn test. I wouldn't get too excited. I think we got a long way to go. Fortunately, we got plenty of time. Talk to you tomorrow. It was life one out. Test number one for an engine burn after reconnection. We are going in three, two, one. That's not what I expected. This is life one. Test number one has failed. We'll be starting over. Hi Michael, it's, uh, my name is Eric Heinen, I'm from Haifa, Israel, and in behalf of my family, my town, my country, I wish you a best of luck and a safe uh, journey back home from space. Thank you. Michael, uh, stand by. I have an important message to you from Mr. Moffat. I will be sending it to you now. Michael, this is Mr. Ann. I got something that might cheer you up. We've compiled a short video of uh, well-wishers from around the world. I'd like to ask your permission to transmit this up. This is life one, with an answer to your request. No. No, no thank you. Life one out. says there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. The question is, do you change your thinking or just try to stop thinking altogether? This is Life One Out. Um, I want to know, uh, how do you get to the bathroom in space? <laughs> I don't know why you let something like that bother you so much. It was a personal question about my personal business. Kid asked a question. What do you want me to tell him? That every time we defecate, our stool is reconstituted into a paste that we eat for dinner? It's flavored paste. You get to choose your own flavor. This is life one, day 182. Six months. I don't know, Bob. Should we be celebrating? Okay, Michael, everything appears to be 100% on track and you're getting everything done famously, uh, except that my data is showing that there are issues and problems that I don't understand. So uh, let me do some more work and let, let me get back to you, but, but stay the course that things are improving. Bob out. Toronto.
Burlington, Vermont. Vermont. Santiago, Chile. Hi, Michael. Uh, we've been quiet down here, just not wanting to put any unnecessary pressure on you. On you. But we have some people down here who want to know how close you think you are to a second engine burn test. So if you could, please kindly confirm receipt of this message. Bob out. Uh, I'd say we are three weeks, three weeks out from our next engine burn test, so nobody get excited. I'll check in again tomorrow. Looks like that's going to take forever. <laughs> Bob, I need to talk to you about something. I, uh, I know there's a vacuum in that capsule. I know that there's no sound in that capsule. I know that Nathan is dead. But I hear something in there. I can figure out what it is. And I'm starting to think that it's me. Life went out. Astronaut Forest, what is it you plan to do with your free time? Michael, Bob here. Listen, buddy, could you do me a favor and just get a little rest? I know that you are working 
very, very hard on this repatch, but there's no reason to push yourself to do another engine burn test tomorrow. Between you and me, you have got plenty of time, so let's just put it off for a day or two. Go to the beach, drink a Mai Tai, just take a day off, okay? Bob out. I got about six more hours on this repatch. But we are doing this engine burn test tomorrow, come hell or high water. That's all I got. Life one out. This is engine burn connection test number two. Arming. In three, two, one. Bob, I'm becoming concerned about the failure of these engine burn tests. I'm worried about the ramifications. calories taken in today uh, about 11 minutes of calisthenics there's a sound coming from the hibernation and re-entry capsule I, I don't know what it is could you Take a look at that for me. Or give me some ideas about what that could be. Thanks. Life one out. There is no reason that there should be any sound
coming from the capsule. The capsule is dead. Now, listen to me. You are not sleeping. One friend to another, you look like hell, bro. So, get some rest. Continue eating. Continue exercising. You have to exercise not just your body, Michael, but your mind, and get some rest. That's my advice to you today. Bob out. Engine burn test number seven. Three, two, one. This is engine burn test number eight. Three, two, one. Test number 11 in three, two, one. Number 14 in three, two, one. Engine burn test number 25 in three, two, one. Oh, it's not here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Nobody else would rather do this mission with. I mean that. Michael, you, <laughs> you son of a bitch. I, I cannot believe that you made it. Uh, I, I lost a lot of money. Um, be well. well, we'll do the work we need to here and uh, send us a message when you can. Bob out. Yeah. So what's next? I still have the post-Venus engine burn ahead and have yet to perform a successful test. Then if I do get all the way back to Earth, I have to crawl back into that capsule and hope that whatever rudimentary interior repair I do won't rupture on re-entry. And before that can happen, 
I had years of this. For what? To say I survived? Sometimes I think if I could get these engines fired up at all, maybe I shouldn't stop at Earth. Maybe I should ride this thing all the way to Europa. dead already. Otherwise, yeah, I made it. But what's the point? Astronaut Forrest, I just want to thank you so much for being a tremendous influence to me and my family. We're so proud of you. We wish you the very best. And please, have a safe journey home. You're my hero. sending back the most beautiful pictures that I've ever seen. Buddy, Venus is right outside your ship right now, and I, I, I wanted to implore you to, to let me send you the images. It's amazing.
This is Michael Forrest of Life One. I have just seen Venus. It's so close, I feel like I've so close I feel like I could reach out and touch it. I'm millions of miles from home. My only companion is dead. And I can't help but think that I'm the luckiest man alive. I wish that you could see what I see. This is life worn out. This is Life One. Stand by for post Venus engine burn. Arming. In three, two. Michael, it is official. The Broncos have won the Super Bowl. Well, not really. Uh, you're on your way home, buddy. Two more years to go. Maybe by the time you're home, you'll be old enough to have a beer with me. Sleep well, because I am going to bed. Bob out. Life one to mission control. You remember that video that Moffitt made for me? I think you could track that down. I think I'd like to see it now. Thanks. This message is for astronaut Michael Forrest. My name is Avery Green. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Forest is a great place. You can give me the love of the people in the world. Love is Michael. I'm going to put it in the car. I'm going to put it in the car. Good luck, Michael, in Chinese. Hi, Michael. I'm going to put it in the car. I'm going to put it in the car. And thank you so much. Astronaut Forest, I just want to thank you so much for being a tremendous influence to me and my family. We're we so wish you a you. safe return. And you've been a really big inspiration for all of us. Please come back soon. Masa Naim, the Masato, Hazara, the Kadua. Bonne chance, Michael. And pense à toi. Bon retour, Michael. One, one time in school, um, I was watching one of your videos for a long time, like we're talking hours. Um, and then this teacher came in and she said, you're missing science class. And then I told her, I ain't missing nothing. I'm watching astronaut Michael Forrest go on a search for space whales. That sounds like science to me. 
いつまでも私たちの歴史上に残る子供でしょうそして今ヤバいヒーローアストロナットフォレスト You are a great hero to the Japanese people You give us hope And your great accomplishment will be etched in the history of mankind Sometimes I wonder if you're scared You don't ever look scared But you might get stuck up there And I just wanted to tell you Don't be scared Cause I'm gonna be just like you And if you get stuck, I'll come and get you. All right, cross checks are complete. We've run 10 pressure test simulations, and it appears that your patch is solid. The inflatable aero shell is 100%, was never compromised. So. Got yourself a heat shield. You can start warming up the capsule for the ride home really at any time. All systems are go with power generator running at 99.6%. Truly, a hell of a job. You've got her purring like a kitten. So, this is it. Time to say goodbye to the half mod. Time to say goodbye to Life One. Listen, Michael, I'm, I'm proud to have been here with you. Thanks, Bob. I couldn't have done it without you. That is so true. It's been my pleasure. Okay, stand by. All that's left to do is fire the engines for the braking procedure. We'll see you after splashdown. Bob out. Life one to mission control. Life one to mission control. Mission control, over. Jess, how you doing, buddy? Listen, I need to speak to Mr. Moffat. Can you find him for me? Thanks. This is life one out. What can I do for you, Michael? How's the countdown going? Funny you should ask. That's uh, actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Shoot. I've decided to abort the countdown. What do you say? What do you mean abort? I'm rebooting the mission. I'm going to Europa. Wait a minute. I got a ton of reasons why that's not going to work. Besides that, everybody here is working to get you down here safely. Just listen to me for a second. There's a reason I came up here. Someone's supposed to go. Someone's supposed to see this. Michael, I have no button to bring you down. You got me. You got me. There's nothing I can do. I thought my life was over when that accident happened. The truth is, I've been living life up here. I'm going to continue to live. Michael, what was this all for? See the way 
files on Europa. Mr. Moffat. You have to learn to trust me again. Michael, listen to me. I don't know how else to put this, but we gotta lay Nathan to rest. We have to. I just want you home. You hear me? Michael? I can't have another death on my conscience. Michael. Michael. This is Michael Forrest of Life One. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> I'm not normally a man of many words, but I'm doing the best I can. I wanted to thank all of you for your support. I thought I was alone up here. I was wrong. It was about three years ago from now that astronaut Nathan Miller lost his life. I lost a colleague, a fellow astronaut, a friend. But just like all of you, his spirit never abandoned me. In a book he brought on board, a collection of poems, he speaks to me. One passage in particular, I still hear him loud and clear. It's by T.S. Eliot. It says, we shall not cease from exploration. And the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Through the unknown, unremembered gate when the last of earth left to discover was that which was the beginning quick now here now always a condition of complete simplicity costing not less than everything and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well Tongues of flame are enfolded into the crown, not of fire. And the fire and the rose are one. We're just getting started. This is life one.